Good evening and welcome to Serving Families, the Children's Board of Hillsborough County. I am joined here with Maria from the Children's Board. How are you doing today, Maria? Very well, thank you. How's it going? It is going good. So before I hand things over to Maria, um, our program tonight is part of our Libraries Build Community Series. So this is a collaboration that we are doing with the University of South Florida. So we, it, the main focus is to bring you, to bring families resources that could be useful to them. So this is part of this whole series. So we hope that there is something here that you can take away with you. And as always, we have either a book or tonight we have a resource shout out. And I am gonna go ahead and turn off my camera just so you can get a better view of this PowerPoint here. So our resource shout out this evening is for um, our government assistance from home. So this is something that you can access from the library's website. The link is there. So you would just route to our e-government page and it has um, a bunch of links and resources that can help you find the government assistance that you need. So I am now going to hand things over to Miss Maria. Thank you so much. I really appreciate the invitation and I appreciate uh, your interest and how you're continuing to engage the, the community through this work. So thank you so much for your service. Um, I'm going to talk to you a little bit today about the family support programs that the Children's Board supports in Hillsborough County. And so I'll start first um, by just telling you a little bit about us. We are considered a Children's Services Council. We're unique in Florida. So there's 67 counties throughout the state, but only 11 have a Children's Service Council. We were created um, in 1988 by local referendum as an independent special taxing district. Um, so what that means is that we're able to collect property tax revenue um, at 0.4589 millage rate for every $1,000 of assessed property value. And um, we are governed by a 10-member board. Five of those members um, serve by virtue of the um, position they hold in our community, uh, and the other five are assigned by the governor. Our mission here locally is to invest in partnerships um, that will offer quality programs to support the success of all children and families in our community. The vision is that the county will be recognized as one of the top places to raise children. And we have four focus areas. So um, this is where our priorities lie. Uh, directly related to families with young children. So typically the target age group is pregnant women and children birth through elementary school age. So those focus areas for us are children are healthy and safe, children are developmentally on track, children are ready to learn and succeed, and family support. And for the purposes of today's presentation, family support is the one we'll focus on. So I was talking to you before about how we collect property tax revenue. Our overall budget for this fiscal year is a little over $53 million. Our program expenditures are a little over $44 million. That means 83% of what we take in goes right back out into the community invested in um, program services to support the families in our community. So our website has a um, variety of resources and that's where we also indicate our pending um, funding opportunities that come up. So be sure to browse the website and sign up for our newsletter. The reason I'm bringing it to your attention now is because I'm going to talk a little bit about um, the family guide. The 2021 family guide has been posted to our website you are able to access hard copies of the family guide. It is a very small kind of pocket book that is in English and Spanish. So if you need a large supply for distribution, you just need to call the children's board and we can arrange um, 
for pickup or even perhaps a drop off of uh, a supply of family guides, but it's available on our website. So I'm gonna do today is really just focus on describing a few of the programs that we are funding related to family support and economic stability. Um, because we provide funding for these programs, it's very rare for there to be any kind of charge or fees associated with their services. So almost uh, all services um, that you'll find in the Family Guide are at no cost. Uh, to the families in Hillsborough County. So I'm first gonna start off with our Children's Board Family Resource Centers. So this is a wonderful opportunity um, for, again, anyone in the community to call or stop by any one of our resource centers. There are currently seven centers located throughout the county. One center in Plant City is currently being remodeled, so it's not open, but we have a resource center in Brandon, in Ruskin, in our uh, headquarters, which is located in Ybor City. We consider that the central Tampa location. Um, the other locations are in Town and Country, Temple Terrace, and North Tampa. At the resource centers, if you go to their, their website is uh, familysupporth c.org but again that information is in the family guide um you'll be able to draw down their calendars and see the different types of events that they have um, one of the more popular services is access to the computer labs that they have so that you can go online and perhaps um, complete application or do any kind of a business or educational need that you might have um, there are so many family activities that they host uh, every month. Uh, just too many to name here today, um, but really a nice, nice array of services at, at all of our centers. So I hope that you'll pay them a visit soon. Um, Bay Area Legal Services. This is an opportunity to receive uh, legal assistance if you qualify so they might have some eligibility requirements that they'll go through but again no charge if you are eligible and they provide uh, housing supports as well as some family services um, there are for example families in our community um, who are taking care of a child of which they're not the biological parent and and they need um, certain um, documents in order to be able to make decisions on behalf of that child. So that's an example of a family legal matter um, that Bay Area Legal Services might assist you with. Um, so there are a variety of services that they have available. And if you don't qualify for one of our programs, they get funding from various other sources. So there might be other opportunities there. Um, so giving them a call um, to explain what your a situation and need is might lead you either to them helping you or them connecting you with another resource. The Children's Home Network, uh, they provide a program called Kinship Care and it's similar um, to what I just explained about a, a caregiver that's taking care of a child um, but is not their biological child. Um, and so what kinship services can do is make sure that you have access to financial benefits that might assist you in raising that child, making sure that you have support services, um, because it, it could be very difficult um, to ne not necessarily have children in your home and then all of a sudden, we, all of a sudden have responsibility of, of a child or more multiple child, children in the case of siblings. Um, and so oftentimes, um, you just need additional support to provide that, that care. Um, and it can be an, a, an exceptionally sensitive matter uh, to those children as well. So the program may be able to access therapeutic services like counseling or other kind of support groups to help not just the adult, but the child as well. And then we're gonna move on to the crisis center of Tampa Bay. And you, and you might have heard of them because they operate uh, the 211 number. So essentially calling 211 will connect you to the crisis center and they'll be able to provide you with 
a, a wide array of resources available in our community. Um, so they're very, very accessible. Um, and I, I think the primary purpose of our funding um, for that particular program is associated with child development and making sure that families have uh, what they need to raise their young children and optimize their development. However, it's really important to stress that they do so much more than that. And that's really true for so many of the programs that we fund. We fund most often just a small piece of these organizations. They, they have funding from a lot of sources and, and do so much more um, than just manage the program that we fund them for. So that is the Crisis Center of Tampa Bay. And we move on to the Donning Family Services, A Path to Prevention. This is a relatively new program that we're funding in our community. And it's really to assist families who are at risk of becoming homeless. So we are trying to really get ahead of the, the concerns and the roadblocks that these families are facing, trying to prevent them from having to, to lose their home, their property, and have to make all of these changes that impact not only the adults, but again, the children. You know, when you move, you might have to change schools. So it's really important that we try to get to the issues to prevent homelessness. Uh, and so Donning Family Services is going to be starting those services in the next couple of months. And then we have a, a few more programs that I wanted to highlight for you today. And these work with more um, a specific target population or a very um, particular service. So first is Enterprising Latinas, and that's located in um, Guaymama, the most southern part of our county. And their focus there is really to support women and making sure that they have entrepreneurial skills or other um, educational skills that prepare them for the workplace um, to, so that they can sustain themselves and their families. Um, and they do that through a variety of ways, through workshops, training programs, and family support services. So they particularly work with women and are in Waimama. Then we have the Family Healthcare Foundation, and they work throughout the whole county, but their specific focus is making sure that everyone is insured. There are so many families out there that don't understand the insurance options that are available to them, who, which can also be at a very reasonable price. So uh, the Health Family Healthcare Foundation, again, will work with you free of no charge to understand your circumstances and help you make find out if you are qualified um, for insurance. And if you're not, your kids may be. Uh, and so we definitely want to increase the number of, of children and families who are insured in our community because health care and preventative care uh, are so, so very important to preventing things from getting worse later on. And we have here the Hillsborough Education Foundation, fairly new um, program funded by the Children's Board. And it's their program is called CB, which stands for Children's Board Tech, Learning at Home. So as you know, as a result of COVID, um, many children um, became e-learners and families chose to keep children um, in their home instead of returning to school. That was an option that, that was provided to them. Um, and then those families may have encountered some barriers if they didn't have appropriate technology in their home or didn't actually didn't really know how to use it and knew, use all the new features of, that the e-learning required and that teachers were now using. And so Hillsborough Education Foundation does something beautifully unique to work with uh, our Hillsborough County social workers in the school district to get referrals for children who might need support or their families need support with how to use this technology. So they actually go into the home and do a technology assessment. And after completing that assessment, determine if the family needs uh, 
just to learn how to use their existing equipment or whether they need new e equipment. And if they need new equipment, they can purchase that equipment for them and then show them how to use it. Um, so this was funded directly as a response to COVID and a need in our community. Um, so we we're really excited um, that we were able to get that going. The Hispanic Services Council uh, works in distinct areas of the county. So particularly um, with Hispanic families, but not limited uh, to those families. And their main focus is really to make sure that parents and their children are, are communicating, especially around educational goals, making sure that families who are new to the Tampa area understand how the school district works, how the local resources work, how they can navigate services um, for themselves and for their children. So they really provide a, a wonderful service in kind of in walking through uh, situations um, with families and, and getting them you know, to a better place where they feel that they have met some of the goals and, and expectations that they have for themselves and their children. And last but not least, I left a, a word out of uh, this agency's title. The, the agency is called Positive Spin. And they are specifically a case management program. They only work in a few of the zip codes in Hillsborough County. So that um, North Tampa, Temple Terrace area. So 33612, 3, that upper um, city of Tampa area and Temple Terrace. They provide case management services. And what's unique about them is that they really take a, uh, an empowering strength-based approach um, to supporting families with what they call a, a wraparound um, conference model where they sit and include everyone identified by the family to help them meet their goals. And they're also able to access a unique funding stream that we have at the Children's Board called the Administrative Service Organization. And for short, we call it the ASO. And what's great about this ASO is that when Positive Spin is working with a family, they develop a family support plan. And on that plan, there are goals and services that they might need in order to achieve those goals. And if there is no other payer for a particular service, then the family is able to access ASO funds. And what ends up happening there is that, so let's say for example, that on the plan, a family's um, child is not doing very well in school. Um, and so the goal is for him to improve his grades. And so they need a tutor in order to assist them with doing that because they cannot afford a tutor. Um, the school tutoring program might be full. And so they want to hire a tutor uh, to help develop um, the academic skills. So the family gets to choose a tutor from an approved um, provider list, make the arrangements for how, the tutor, how and where those tutoring services are going to take place. And then ASO dollars, once it's approved, will pay that tutor directly. So the family doesn't really ever have to worry about paying the provider or services being canceled for non-payment or things of that nature. Um, so it really just makes it seamless and very easy for families to access services through the use of, of those funds. But you can only access those funds if you're working with one of our approved case management agencies and Positive Spin is one of those agencies. So there are several programs that have access to ASO. I, again, I couldn't list them all here, um, but these are the highlights. These are some of the programs that, again, not only provide uh, family support services, but really also want to make sure that they are supporting the economic development of families in our community. So after having said all of that, that's the, um, there are other resources. I'm not sure if someone has a particular resource in mind um, that they have been looking for, would like to inquire about. Um, so, but I'm happy to take any kind of questions that you have.
All right, Maria, thank you so much for all of that wonderful information. And if you would like to join me back on camera, I'd love to see you again. Um, I also want to know before we dive into our questions, and please, if you do have any questions for Maria or myself here, please be sure to drop them into the question section. A couple of things while we are waiting for those questions to come through, I have included the link to the Children's Board's website in the chat, along with the um, name of the last uh, funding provider that she had on her slide where it got cut off. So I did put that in the chat section of, as well if you are interested in that resource. So both of those things are in the chat, really easy for you to just click on them real quick so you can take a look at them. So we do have a couple of questions. Um, the first question is, you mentioned on one of your slides, uh, resource centers for families. Um, are those open right now with uh, the COVID restrictions going on? Yes, they are all open. They're open um, Monday through Saturday. All right, awesome. So again, you need to go see somebody in person that is there. And are there any income um, restrictions with any of the uh, programs that you provided here. So do you have to fall below a certain income to take advantage, to, to say that's a word, or boy, but again, to um, access any of these resources? So, so the answer is no, there is no income eligibility or restriction in terms of you reaching out to any of the programs that we fund. However, for example, let's say you called a Family Healthcare Foundation and you wanted to find out if you were eligible to receive health care as well as your six-year-old daughter. They might ask you, now what they're going to do is they're going to go to the marketplace, they're going to go to Florida Kid Care, they're going to track all the different options that are available to you and your child. And then to be eligible to actually get health care, that there might be an income eligibility there and they would then let you know. But in order to access them to help you get to that point, there's no charge or eligibility for that. All right, awesome. This is a question that is near and dear to the library world. Does the Children's Board still offer notary services? Yes, at all of the Children's Board awesome. Family Resource Center. All right, fantastic. This is a question that we get a lot in our libraries because we are not able to offer notary service. So notary services. So everybody out there, head over to the Children's Board. They will be able to help you out with that. And, and I'll send you it in, but there's no charge for it. Awesome. Thank you so much. It's good to know. And before I um, switch things over here to our closing, it looks like we have one more question here. And again, I encourage you all to drop any last minute questions you may have into the question section. Um, are most of the programs residence based? Like, do you have to live in a certain part of the county to use them? No, you just have to be a Hillsborough County resident. Um, and so if you called one of, so for example, the, the last program I talked about, Positive Spin, um, they really work in that North Tampa, Temple Terrace okay, area. fantastic. I think there's a little bit of a time delay. <laughs> um, so if you call them and you didn't live in that area, they're going to do one of two things. They're going to call the children's board and ask them for permission to serve someone who lives outside of the area um, because they feel that they're the best um, to help that particular family and their situation. So they can always ask us. Um, the other option would be that they would send you to another location um that serves your particular area and so that they would they would assist you in a referral and getting um, contact information for someone else who could better assist all right awesome thank you so much and again thank you maria we have miss maria here from the children's board joining us thank you so much for all of this wonderful information i know that i learned a lot today and we've been you know we've been partnering with the children's board for years and i just learned a whole bunch of stuff so thank you so much for that so while we're waiting to see if any last minute questions come in i'm going to go ahead and 
you know, close this out here. Of course, if you need to contact us um, by any way, we are, you are able to contact the library by phone, email, text, chat, however you want to contact us. Um, we have our contact linked there on the slide. Also, if you would like to see any other programs and events that we have um, through the library, any of our virtual events, we've also have the link included for you there. Um, quick plug, again, this particular program this evening was part of our Libraries Build Community Series. We'll be doing another program in this series next week, same time, um, 6.30 on Wednesday. We will be doing a program called Feeding Our Neighbors local free and discount food. So that um, link is also in the chat there. So if you want to go ahead and sign up for our next program in the series, I, I highly suggest that you do so. Also, um, again, the link to the children's board, that link is also in the chat. So I highly recommend that you go ahead and click on that so you can go ahead and explore all of the wonderful resources that Maria talked about here this evening and i'm just going to do one last sweep for questions before we end our time here this evening and it looks like we are set so one more time maria thank you so much for joining us and thank you for being an awesome partner with the library our pleasure thank you so much for your partnership all right, everybody, thank you for joining us, and you all have a good evening. Good night, everybody.